Hi, everyone. You do not want to miss this episode. We're going to dig into the Insured Retirement Program. We're going to tell you what it is, why so many wealthy people use it. Let's dig into the benefits. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Control and Compound. I am Darren Mitchell, and joining me as always, Christina Wyatt. Christina, how are you doing today? Hi, Darren. I'm doing great. How are you doing today? I'm doing awesome. I'm excited for this. This is actually from uh, a client requested uh, that we uh, we do this podcast, so we're going to we're going to do this podcast. Hopefully, lots of people get some benefit out of it. Absolutely. I'm excited to talk about the insured retirement plan. Um, and I'm going to try really hard not to say IRP because that acronym comes out from time to time. So please correct me. We're talking about insured retirement plans, sometimes referred to as IRPs in the um, insurance world. Yeah. And insurance companies are going to have different names for them too. If, if we dealt with you know, if you go to 10 insurance companies, they're all going to have some kind of version of this. They they all kind of have their little names. But yeah, we're going to we're going to dig into all the details. Yes. Before we jump in, though, I just want to remind everybody, if you're listening on your favorite podcast platform, please make sure that you subscribe and leave that five star review. And if you're listening or watching on YouTube, please subscribe and hit that bell button so you always know when new content is coming out. And don't forget to follow us on our social media at Control and Compound on Instagram and TikTok. All righty, let's dig into it. What is an insured retirement program? An insured retirement program is a savings program where you put money in a cash value life insurance policy, grow it for the next 20, 30 years, and then you leverage that money, you borrow against that in retirement. It's a strategy of the wealthy, and it's the same type of strategy the very wealthy use with their assets. Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, the wealthy guys, they're have, it, have these large assets, and then they borrow against them. Now, there could be shares in Amazon or, or Tesla. Same idea, though. We're going to have an asset, and we're going to borrow against it tax-free. So who is this for? This is really for someone, you know, anywhere from 20 to 60, kind of, that you have it probably at least 10 years of, uh, of working life left. Um, typically, if you're in a higher tax bracket, this is going to look better. So somebody in an extremely low tax bracket, this might not make sense. And you've got to be insurable for this concept. So, you know, in, in some of the previous podcasts, we've talked about we can borrow a life uh, for the insurability, uh, which we can absolutely do. But to do this specific strategy, uh, we need that death benefit on your life. So the person should be insurable or one of, one of you or your spouse should be insurable in order for this, uh, this to work. So, Christina, let's dig into this. How, how does it work? Yeah, so I think uh, the first thing to note is that it is it is a strategy, right? So like the infinite banking uh, strategy that we talk about so much, this is another type of strategy. And the cool part is, is that we get to use the exact same product that we use for infinite banking, right? We use a high cash value life insurance um, policy. Uh, they're so versatile, right? We can use them for so many things. Uh, so first step in setting up or using this strategy, I suppose, would be getting yourself a high cash value life insurance policy, right? Right? We're going to want to set one of those up, um, get it max funded, put as much cash in there as you can. Um, and then typically with these, we do want them to be paid up in 10, 20 years. You don't want them. You don't want like a life pay happening with this. We do need to be able to have it um, self-funded in order to put this strategy in place later on. So typically we're looking at a 20 pay, 10 pay, getting it all set up. And then you're going to leave it there to, you know, grow uninterrupted compound wealth. Um, and you're going to use it for all those other things that we talk about. You can use it for infinite banking, you use it for your opportunities, your emergencies, all that jazz. And as you're doing all those other things, that cash value policy is compounding in the background. And then at a point in the future, you're going to be ready to retire and you're going to want to, you know, now you've got this nice large cash value policy. What are we going to do with the cash value? Well, at this point, that's when we do that collateral um, strategy, the collateral loan, and we go to a lender. Um, we're going to dig into it more specifics, but big picture, we go to a lender. We set up a collateral loan against your policy as a line of credit, actually. So this is kind of neat. You get a debit card and you spend it as you want in retirement. Super easy. Um, and you can let that interest capitalize. So you're not paying back that interest every month or anything like that. You're using it. And then uh, down the road, when you die, your death benefit's going to pay it off for you. So it's a retirement income strategy a tax-free retirement income strategy, which makes it a lot better, um, that we set up and that we use uh, with that high cash value life insurance policy. So you get a tax-free debit card in retirement. How cool is that going to be? Hey, I need some money. Let's withdraw some money tax-free. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a great concept, especially when you, when you factor in the taxes. And a lot of people, when they talk about the insured retirement program, they talk about 
the benefits in retirement. And there's absolutely incredible benefits in retirement that we'll get dig into. But what I love about this strategy, on top of the, the benefits in retirement, it's all the benefits prior to retirement. So we're going to show an example on, I think, on a 40-year-old. So when that person's like 40 to 60 or 40 to 65 or whatever the, the working life of that person is, all the benefits they have before they actually hit retirement. Because what most people are doing, you know, they're putting money in an RSP or some lock on a more permanent lock away retirement plan. What we're doing here is, well, great. We're putting money inside a cash value life insurance policy. We're going to have tax-free growth. If we need to access that money prior to retirement, we can access that money completely tax-free. If, you know, there's you die, guess what? There's a death benefit. Uh, it's a stress-free environment because there's really no volatility in this cash value life insurance. I, I still love, even if I'm saving for retirement in this strategy, I know I love knowing that I have a cash value that if an opportunity comes along or an emergency comes along, I have access to money. Uh, we get into the, it can do more than one job if we put it inside the insurance policy. We get other other podcasts we talk about that guaranteed to go up. Uh, and then, you know, what happens if you don't make it to retirement? So you get a husband and wife out there and with a couple little kids and, and one of the spouses starts this program and heaven forbid in year two, they they pass away. Well, in traditional savings, well, the savings plans stop, right? You've never you never made it to your destination to save enough to look after your family. Um, but potentially in this situation, you could have a large enough death benefit that if you unfortunately died in two years, it's a self-fulfilling plan. There would be a lump sum paid out that your spouse uh, would, would be okay for retirement. And, and then really the biggest one for me is this and asset, right? I Typically what people do is they save money for retirement and that's it. That's all that money's going to do. This is an and asset. We're saving for that tax-free retirement. But if in year three, I see an amazing piece of real estate business opportunity, stock market crashes 40%, I can literally take this policy, multiply the money, take advantage of that additional opportunity, make a bunch of money, pay back that loan. That didn't affect the retirement strategy at all. That was just an and asset. So we get to multiply money for the next 20 years before we use it in retirement and we get all the benefits of retirement. So Christina, any comments on that before we jump into the benefits of retirement? So before we dig into the benefits um, in retirement, why don't we take a step back and talk about what it looks like setting one of these up, right? So uh, when we talk about the loans that we're typically using, we're using those unstructured loans through the insurance company. We pay back when, how, and if we want, right? When we set these up, we're going to set them up a little bit differently and we're going to go to an outside lender. So we're not going to be using the insurance company um, for these loans. We're going to go to an outside lender, lots of lenders um, out there do borrow against or lend against these policies. Sorry, when you think of it, why wouldn't they? It's guaranteed to always go up, never go backwards, has a 150 year track record of paying a dividend. So a perfect lending, a perfect thing to collateralize on, right? They have no problem lending against it. Um, but we're going to talk today about Manulife Bank's lending product for this. And I picked them because they do a very good job um, marketing it. You can see the IRP, Insured Retirement Planning documents marketing out there on that. They talk about it a lot. So Manulife Life Bank has a specific product just for this strategy. Um, and you do need to um, complete an application in order to get it set up. So when you want to get this uh, line of credit set up, and it is, it's a line of credit with 90% or 75% of the cash values, depending on what you want to do for the application. So 75% access is super simple. It's literally the application and a quick credit check. Um, if you want to get to that 90%, sometimes they um, ask for some financials, bigger numbers and whatnot. But typically, it's an application and a credit check to get one of these set up. So we do the application. You're going to get the debit card um, in your name that you're going to be able to use for your retirement spending and whatnot. A um, couple rules around getting it set up. Like one of, one of the big questions is, what is their retirement age, right? It's easy for you to say um, it's a retirement plan, but like when, are, when am I supposed to retire in their eyes? So Manulife Bank does have a rule around age 50. So they say age 50 is kind of the retirement age, um, or they want the plan to be in place five years sometimes, depending on the type of product that you're setting up. But 
50 years is kind of the rule. So rule of thumb, 50 years, you're going to set up this insured retirement plan um, through Manulife Bank. You do need to have at least 25,000 of cash values inside of the policy at the time of setup. So it's not for smaller policies. Mostly we're setting these up for retirement. You're going to have more than that in there anyways, but you have to have at least 25,000 in there. So 25,000 to get it set up, get that line of credit done. Next question we usually get are what are the interest rates? What, right? What are what are they charging? So it lines up with the market. It goes with prime. So right now I think it's prime plus one and a half, depending on how much you get in there. You have more than 250,000 in there. You're getting very good rates. Um, they're gonna look at it just like a typical loan that you're taking out or a home equity line of credit. Same kind of thing, right? It's a lending product. So kind of going in line with what's happening out there in the world today with uh, interest rates. So that's what you're going to see for interest rates. Um, it's pretty easy to set up, right? Once you're done, you get that application in place. Now you've got that debit card uh, and you're good to go. People ask, well, you know, it's cash values uh, rise. Is the line of credit going to rise? Yes, we can go back. Sometimes we need to do a little reapplication or show them uh, the summaries. So we do in-force illustrations to show them how the cash value is growing historically, these always go up, they're guaranteed to go up. So they don't they don't mind again, they don't mind lending against it. It's just getting some paperwork together. I do recommend though, if you're hitting that retirement age, and maybe you're cutting back on uh, income going forward and whatnot, just get this put in place. It's just like, you know, the home equity line of credit, you get the application done, you sit it there, you don't have to use it at all until you're ready to use it, right? It can sit there. Um, and you don't incur interest until you start using it as well that interest capitalizes. I don't know. I think I've mentioned that, but it capitalizes. So you're not paying that interest any month, interest every month. And if you're not using it, there's no interest. So get it set up so that you're good to go. You can use that in retirement. Love it. All kinds of great benefits. I just I just can't wait for retirement to just have this tax free debit card. And anytime I want to spend money, I just take money and spend it tax free. That sounds really exciting. And, and, and you know, I'll tell you some personal experience. Um like my my bank, I'm dealing with one of the big five banks. When I met with them, they absolutely, when I turned 50, they said, great, we will loan you money on this product at a really competitive rate. Uh, they required interest. So the banks do it too. But, you know, I remember years ago, I had a client walk in in Sussex, New Brunswick and ask the local branch to borrow against their cash value and called me and said, they don't know what I'm talking about. And I'm like, well, the big banks don't have it in all the branches. They'll have it, you know, in Toronto, there'll be a couple of people that look after this. But we like typically like, using companies that specialize in this you mentioned manulite bank there's a few others yeah i should i should mention too sorry i forgot with manulite bank the, you don't have to have a manulite product to do it either right like they do it on all the big insurance companies all the big products out there they're not uh manulite bank is separate from manulite insurance when we're talking about those products um probably something i should mention as i use them as an example that's all sure and and uh you know the the, the other thing is just to clarify it's 50 for this insured retirement program with an outside lender. But if in year two, you want money, 100%, you can access 90% of the money from the from the insurance company directly in the form of a policy loan. So typically, we're talking policy loans. Today, we're actually talking collateral loans or third-party loans. And that's what we're going to use, use in retirement, not in the, you know, the first 10, 20 years, but in retirement. We, there's, there's a couple of reasons why, why we would use that. Well, and that's just one type too, right? So there's other, like the lenders have just regular cash surrender value lines of credit and stuff too. You don't have to use the insured retirement plan. This is just one of the products that we're talking about that you can use. Absolutely. And then probably the two questions we get asked the most on this um, is number one, in retirement, if I'm doing this insured retirement program, can I write off the interest? Uh, short answer is probably not. You can only write off the interest on, on a loan is if you're borrowing to invest. So if you're using this to fund your retirement lifestyle, you can't write off the interest. If you're borrowing from this in retirement to actually invest, well, great, then you can write off the interest. But most people that are doing this are planning to spend this money in retirement. In the first 20 years, maybe you borrow and write off the interest then, but in retirement, you're gonna borrow and you're not gonna write off the interest. The other big question is, can I use corporate dollars for this strategy? And that is a resounding yes. Uh, they look phenomenal as a personal retirement program. If we do corporate, it, it, it just takes it to that next level. Uh, it's really exciting on the corporate side. We'll do another podcast or, or a video on the corporate side. But yes, you can do it corporately. Um, so those are the two questions we get asked the most. And then the, the other question, Christina, 
will my retirement income be smaller because I'm using this strategy instead of a traditional product? We've talked about all the major benefits we're going to have. We're going to have all these things, access to the money, death benefit and all that. Well, if I if I do this strategy, am I going to see a smaller smaller retirement income than if I did a traditional financial planning method? Yeah, super valid question. If we do this, uh, if we use this strategy, is our retirement income going to be smaller? So short answer is no, it's going to be bigger, but let's kind of, uh, let's kind of dig into it. I have an example here uh, that I'm going to walk through uh, to show you what those numbers would actually look like in um, what those numbers would actually look like once you hit retirement. So I have a $25,000 a year illustration here where a 40 year old male is depositing 25,000 for 20 years. At the end of that 20 years, the policy is uh, fully paid up. They've put their $500,000 into it. Now, keep in mind that the entire time over that 20 year period, they had full access to the cash. So they were out there maybe doing some real estate investing, you know, investing in their business themselves, all that great stuff. So they had access to their cash the entire time. So on one side of the equation, I have this $25,000 deposit into the insurance policy. And then on the other side, I'm going to show you some numbers based on a 5% traditional investment that you're earning every single year. So let's say you make that 5% return, every single interest return, every single year um, leading up to retirement as well. What are the numbers going to look like on that side? Because it's a good question, right? Is this going to be comparable? All right, so we're gonna start taking the um, retirement income at age 70 in this example. And the reason I use age 70 for this one is because this this is one of the things that you wanna hold on to, right? It is the best from an estate planning perspective uh, to pass down to the next generation. So you're typically gonna to wanna to spend your other taxable assets first um, and then start using this one. As well, you can be using this one, repaying it if you sell off a property, those types of things. It is a line of credit, so you'd still have access to it. But I'd say, you know, actually spending it every single year without doing those repayments, probably looking at more like around age 70. But we could run it at 65. It'd still look really good. Don't get me wrong. But let's look at the age 70 numbers. So at age 70, in this example, um, on both sides, we're going to start pulling around $73,000 out per year. Now, keep in mind that's tax free. You'd have to get like double out of an RSP, 140 grand a year out of an RSP to get that amount. We're going to take 72,000 out tax free from this uh, tax free from this policy. And we're going to take it from the other investment too, just to see how this plays out. So if we take it from the other investment um, by age 82, we are completely out of cash. We have spent our money. So we put 500,000 in, we get to spend $943,671 to the penny here that I'm looking at. So that's how much we get to spend taking it out of that traditional investment route. On the other side, I'm still spending my money. So, or sorry, this 40 year old male is still spending his money. Um, and he's going to spend it right down until age 90. So at that point, he spent around $1.45 million. He spent tax free out of this. But we still have that death benefit, right? Death benefits growing right alongside those cash values the entire time. Cash has been growing uninterrupted. Death benefits still close to 900,000, even after spending 1.4 million, which means this guy's going to spend 1.4, leave 895,000 for a total of 2.35 million that he's been able to take out of this policy versus the other guy who got to spend 943,000, right? That's, you know, for every dollar you put in, that's close to five five dollars that you get to take back out of this thing it's it's pretty incredible yeah i i we, we show this strategy and people oftentimes are like well like the numbers seem too good to be true like you know how come everyone isn't doing this it's too good to be true but if we just kind of stand back and say okay kind of look at this two ways what are we going to do for the next 20 years well for the next 20 years let's say there's eight opportunities that come your way that you're able to take advantage of because you have this cash value life insurance policy. And there's two financial emergencies in the next 20 years. I think that's pretty reasonable for most people, at least. And those financial emergencies tend to derail financial plans. You end up cashing the investment and you stop the compounding. Well, we're going to eliminate that in the lead up to retirement. So we would argue we are going to be way wealthier in retirement using this strategy because of all these additional opportunities you're going to de you'll be able to take advantage of and to deal with those emergencies without stopping the compound. But even if we forget about all that, all those benefits, and we just focus on retirement, Christina just went through the numbers and said, you know, you're going to have triple almost what you would in a traditional plan. You're going to have this big death benefit. Every dollar you put in, you get almost $5 back. 
well, how does that make sense? Well, if you just kind of think of this logically and say, if you're 40 years old and you were going to grow an investment for the next 40, 45 years till death or 50 years tax-free versus traditional taxable, where are you going to have more money? Of course, you're going to have more money on the tax-free growth. But then the other thing that people don't realize is think traditional financial planning. What happens when you retire? You save a million dollars and then you retire. And then the next year you have 950, 900, 800, 700. So you're decreasing the amount of growth you have each year because you're decreasing the principal. You could retire here, start accessing these tax-free loans and be in retirement for 30 years and your money will continue to compound for that full 30 years of retirement. So while your cash value is going up in retirement, your traditional investments are going down. So that's why these numbers make make just absolute magic on the sheet is because we've got, we've got it's not an apples to apples comparisons. We've got a competitive edge. We don't have to cash out our investment because we're getting loans and we don't have to pay tax because we're in a, we're in a tax free environment here uh, inside the insurance policy. So that, yeah, so that... and keep keep in mind. Sorry, I should have mentioned with those uh, w with the numbers that that's using like interest rates of today and dividends of today too. So for people to ask, like, oh, she's probably using a two percent interest rate. Nope, nope, I'm not. That is a solid interest rate that you're getting out there. A six percent interest rate that we used on those, and uh, so it's and the current dividend. So if dividend dividend goes up, that's going to be even better. Yeah, I mean, some advisors will play with the numbers or whatever. We've we've tried to be ultra conservative here. We could have we could have you know play with the software and, and and made these numbers a lot a lot bigger. We would rather uh, under promise and over deliver. Christina, what other benefits are we missing? So a couple other ones that I like to point out are we have to keep in mind that this is non taxable income, right? So you're taking out income that's not taxable on your tax return. It's not going to impact your old age supplement. We've had some podcasts in the past where we talk about that clawback, not ideal. This isn't going to be impacted. Uh, things like pharmacare, where they look at your taxable income, not going to be impacted. Long term care um, facilities, sometimes they look at your taxable income, they can attach themselves to that not going to be impacted. So the fact that it's non-taxable income is huge. Just the non-taxable part obviously is big, but for other reasons um, as well. Another thing to point out is that it's an uncorrelated asset in retirement. So if the market crashes and all your money's in the stock market, it's not ideal, right? That is not a good day. Um, and typically real estate stock market, they are correlated too. And you see that crash, that's where it is. It's really nice to have somewhere that, you know, in 2008, when everything collapsed, it was paying a 7.9% dividend, right? Like not correlated to the stock market, very low volatility, it's a nice place to sleep. You know, you can sleep at night with this, knowing that your, your money's there, it's safe in retirement, which is a great retirement way to live, right? Peaceful, stress-free. I, I, yeah, I, I, I love it. Uh, you know, I, I love that it allows you to save for your retirement in a tax-free environment where you can multiply your money and use it for opportunities. But let's just wrap up here and think of this. Think of this in retirement. So, if you use this concept in retirement, you can have a stress-free retirement where you get to spend way more money than you would have been able to if you didn't do this concept. On top of that. You're going to leave your family a big bag of tax-free money when you pass away. After the loan is paid off, there's still going to be a bag of money. So if you want to learn more about the Insured Retirement Program, head over to our website, controlandcompound.com. Click on the links there, follow up, set an appointment up with one of our wealth coaches' complimentary session. We'd love to talk about the Insured Retirement Program with anyone, anytime. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Have a great day.